Well, thank you very much, Ohio. Thank you very much. Thank you. You know, this is really not a rally. You know this. This has to do with workers, programs, all the things we love. But this is really, we call it a friendly protest. Okay? And you know what we're protesting? We're protesting stupidity, okay? Because so many stupid things you see here. But hello, ho I'll tell you what, Ohio, how, how good have you been? How good have you been? What did we win by? A lot. And your governor is here, and he just said you're winning by a lot more this time than last time, so that's good. Thank you. Mike, thank you very much, Mike. But hello, Ohio, and thank you very much. I'm thrilled to be here in Dayton, the home of the Wright Brothers. Whoa. I wonder what they would think when they see some of these F-35s and these crazy planes that we make nowadays that go thousands of miles an hour, right? They won I wonder. But I want to just thank the, uh, the very hardworking patriots who are the backbone of America. You really are. You're the backbone of America. This is an amazing group of people. This is an amazing group. You know, I'm going to another very nice spot in Ohio where we do have a rally, but I can't imagine you have many more people than we have here, but they will, about 10 times more. <laughs> now, this is for us and our friends and workers. We want workers. 43 days from now, we are going to win this state. We are going to win four more years in the White House. That's true. Yeah, it's true. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know, you had your best year in the history of your state, in the history of our country last year. And we had it until the plague came in. And now we're building it up again rapidly. But you had the best year, and we're going to have — next year will be the best year we've ever had. I believe that. You see that in the third quarter. But we're here today to talk about jobs. We're talking about jobs, a very favorite subject of mine, to know and to understand that uh, the choice in November is going to be very simple. There's never been a time where there's such a difference. One is probably communism. I don't know. They keep saying socialism. I think they're gone. They've gone over that one. That one's passed already. Joe Biden spent the last 47 years shipping your jobs to China and foreign countries. You know that. And I've spent the last four years bringing the jobs back to our country and back to Ohio. On November 3rd, Americans will decide whether we lift our nation to soaring new heights of prosperity or whether we will allow a Joe Biden, Sleepy Joe, to shut down our economy, impose a $4 trillion — that's with a T, by the way —$4 trillion tax hike, abolish Ohio clean coal, oil, natural gas, and ship your jobs and factories and dreams overseas to China and countries that you've never even heard of. Put simply, if Biden wins, China wins. If we win, Ohio wins. And most importantly, in all fairness, America wins. Because you finally have a president who puts America first. And I do put America first. I guess that's why almost four years ago, that's why I did this, right? It's because of this, probably more than any other reason. I watched the jobs going out. I never saw anything so stupid in my life. I watched the worst trade deals. And we've reversed many of them, almost all of them now, but uh, we've reversed them. And uh, again, we we're having the greatest year we've ever had, and it's going to be back very soon. You take a look at what's happening. We're joined today by a real good friend of mine, somebody that's been with me from the beginning, and I've been with him from the beginning, Ohio Governor Mike DeWine. Where's Mike? Where's Mike? Where's Mike? <laughs> what's that all? He's opening up. He's opening up. Where's Mike? Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. He's a good man. And Lieutenant Governor John Houston. Good guys. Yeah. Thanks, John. Good job. Congressman Warren Davidson. You know Warren? Whoa. 
Warren, that's very impressive. These are real warriors. I'll tell you another one, Mike Turner. Do we know Mike, huh? Hell of a lawyer. Thank you, Mike. Thanks for all the help, too. Both of you really appreciate it. And a man, you know, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if you know him. He should become legendary. Because when we didn't have a lot of support, I had a guy named Bob Peducek. You know Bob? And he kept saying, every time I said, you know, we're not getting the kind of support from the top people, he said, that's okay, sir. You went up another two points. We won this state by a lot. Remember the fake news? Well, that's, that's a lot of it back there, too. A lot of fake news. But they were going around, Mike. Hey, Mike, they were going around saying, well, Trump may not be able to. Remember, you have to, in order to win, you have to win Ohio, right? And then for, for a year, I heard, you cannot win unless you win the great state of Ohio. But they didn't say the great state. I say the great state. And I heard it. And I heard it for so long. It would be impossible. And then we won that night by, what, nine points? What was it, Bob? Nine points. We won by a lot. In fact, it was the first indication that that was going to be a tough night for the Democrats. They say, ladies and gentlemen, not only did Trump win Ohio, he won by a hell of a lot more than we anticipated. Right? And then we, then we won on oh, these guys. That's my I love these guys. Look at this group. Look at this. We're not going to mess. Nobody's messing with these guys. You know, they're great workers, but we use them also for security. If anyone gets a little bit, a little bit rough, we'll take it. You'll take care, right, fellas? Thank you very much. Thank you. But we won it big, and that was the beginning of one of the most exciting nights in history, because we did something in 2016 that was amazing. And I'll tell you, honestly, there is more enthusiasm now. And this is fact. In fact, they have a new thing. First of all, you know, we're working very hard on getting a third Supreme Court justice. And I'm going to announce who that is. The only thing I'll say for the women, it will be a woman. Uh-oh. There are a lot of angry people. <laughs> okay, here's a question. Okay, it will be a woman. Does anybody here, please raise your hand if you have the courage. Is there anybody here that insists that it will be and should be a man? Is there anybody with the courage? Please put up your hand right now. A lot of women here. So, okay, ready? Supreme Court justice, most powerful, most important, just the most important. You know, when you become president, they say this is the single most important thing a president does is pick Supreme Court. And by the way, by the end of the first term, we will have 300 federal judges a record. So let's let's give me a free poll. We do this. I have such fun with it. We do it. Give me a free poll. You know, if they go out, they charge hundreds of thousands of dollars. They interview like 19 people, which means nothing. Here we got a lot of people. So give me a free poll. Who would like to see a woman justice of the Supreme Court? Who would like to see a male justice of the Supreme Court? The only one I hear there is women. The, some women. What's that all about? All right. Now, it will be a brilliant person. It will be I, — I have five that we're vetting right now. It'll be a brilliant person. It will be a woman. It will be a woman. And we're looking forward to it. And we'll probably announce it on Saturday, maybe Friday, but Saturday. And it's a big day for our country. It's a big day for you. It's a big day for Ohio. And uh, so I think it'll be great. You know, I always love why I just said that, like, big day for Ohio, and I do it somewhat routinely. You ever notice where Biden goes out and he always picks the wrong location? Like, if he's in Ohio, it's great to be in the state of Florida. <laughs> then he looks around and he doesn't see too many palm trees. He said, are we in Florida? No, you're not. He did that seven times. How do you do that? When you do that, you just walk off the stage. It's over. There's nothing you can do. You can make the greatest remainder of the speech. There's nothing you can do to save it. But the people of Dayton know better than anyone the terrible damage that Biden has inflicted over his 
nearly 50 years, 47 years to be exact. Can you believe it? For 47 years, Joe Biden shook the hands of American workers and then stabbed them in the back. He sent Washington vultures. I mean, think of it all over. And they raked in cash. They raked in big money. Where's, where's the son? Where is he? Where's the son? I'll tell you. Where is he? What did I say? Where is? Where is he? Go ahead. You know, we did that for fun. Where's Hunter? We did a T-shirt. That thing's sold. We come up with these little gems. Where's Hunter? You know where he is? Yeah, he's in the basement with his father. He says, yeah, where's Hunter? Now, Hunter did very well. He had no job. He was thrown out of the military. He, had, he was thrown out. He had no job. And then he goes to he goes to Ukraine and he gets 183,000 a month. Although he had no experience whatsoever, knew nothing about uh, the subject of the company, which you know was energy. I think they got an upfront payment of three million just to be able to get them. And then, think of that: can you put 183,000 dollars a month and three million dollar upfront payment? How about that? I'd take that one myself, you know. And then they go to China. He walks out with $1.5 billion to manage, which is millions of dollars a year. The whole thing is crazy. And the fake news doesn't want to cover it. They don't want to cover it. Did you see the interview the other day with Anderson Cooper the other night? It was, I was softball. That was like, here, Joe. So we'll see. We have a debate coming up. And who knows? You know, look, he's been doing this. You know what? He's been doing it for 47 years. I've been doing it for three and a half years, so he should be able to beat me, I would think. He's much more experienced. He's great. Oh, he's a beauty. But he betrayed you. He lied to you. He abused you, which is why it's time to retire Joe Biden. This is serious stuff. Do we have any Teamsters here? Teamsters? Any Teamsters here? That's all? One? All right. Well, I did a big favor for the Teamsters. You know, they had a trucking company. I think 30,000 jobs going out. James Hoffa called up. Could you help? Could you help? Could you help? I helped. I kept that company going. They saved 30,000 jobs. But then every year, they always endorse the Democrat. Doesn't matter, good or bad. And James Hoff, I'm so disappointed in that guy. So I called. I said, you know, I'd love to get their support. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. They've already endorsed Sleepy Joe Biden. It's like automatic. But you know who doesn't endorse him? All the workers underneath. And they'll either throw him out or he'll retire. He'll retire. You get tired of it. It's like automatic. They endorse the Democrat because the Democrats do whatever the hell they want. It's, uh, it's really — but the workers, the people underneath, the real people, they're with us all the way. I've hired thousands and thousands of Teamsters, all the concrete worker buildings in Manhattan. But they just — they're just, like, wedded. It's uh, almost like a habit. I consider it a habit. I think it's disgraceful. But I saved this company, a big company, good company, great people. We saved it. And then you say, unrelated, totally unrelated. Hey, we'd love to have it. Well, I'm sorry. It's already done. These people are terrible, but that's all right. You always have to remember things, though. Remember. You got to remember, right, workers? On November 3rd, we must turn the page forever on the failed, corrupt political class. That's what it is. They get so much things that are so unfair to the rest of our country, and that's why they're always with that top level of Democrat, but the workers are with us. Biden is a Die-hard globalists. You know, globalists are out. You know that, right? Globalists destroyed. They helped destroy this country. I'll tell you, if I didn't come along, I really mean it. This country was — it was going down, and we stopped it. If you look at your Second Amendment, if you look at so many different things, no matter what it is, <laughs> you look at our jobs, our jobs prior to the, the plague and now coming back, you know, the housing is a record-setting. Car manufacturing is record-setting. You take a look at car sales are record-setting. Uh, retailing. Who would think retail is record-setting? It's amazing, because we had such a good foundation. We closed it up. We saved millions of lives. 
We had no choice. You had to do that. And then we opened it, and now we're rocking. And it's going good. It's really going good. But the Democrats really waged war on the American workers for half a century. Look what they've done. Biden's policy has destroyed 60,000 factories and killed four point — think of it — 4.5 million manufacturing jobs. We brought back 700,000 when they said — right? They said the — the magic wand, you can't do it. Manufacturing jobs are gone. I said, really? I don't think so. Biden championed the NAFTA disaster and China's entry into the World Trade Organization, which was a total catastrophe. That's when China started going up like a rocket. You know, they're considered in the world trade, they're considered a developing nation. No, they're not a developing nation. By being a developing nation, they get all sorts of advantages over us. So we've been protesting it, and we do things that you wouldn't believe. You don't even want to hear about it because it's disgraceful. China is a developing nation, and therefore, for years and years, they had big advantages over the United States, but no more. What followed was the — nothing short — and think of it — nothing short of a blue-collar carnage. And it was in Ohio and Pennsylvania and North Carolina and New Hampshire Michigan. You know how many car plants we're bringing back to Michigan? Nobody's ever seen it. For 40 years, they didn't build a plant. And now they're building them all over. And I tell countries — I told a great gentleman, he just retired, Prime Minister Abe of Japan. I said, Shinzo, you got to build plants here. You can't do this. You're building your cars in Japan and sending them. We want our cars built here. We want cars built here. And they, he said, well, that's not up to me. That's up to the company. That's all right, Shinzo. I know you can do it. The next day, they announced five plants. I mean, you know, what can I tell you? I know my people. It's up to Shinzo. It wasn't up to — it wasn't up to anybody else. But he's great. The workers of America will never forget Biden's economic treachery. They will remember in November after Biden betrayed — and think of it — all the betrayals on NAFTA and China. Forty percent of all of the manufacturing jobs were shipped out of Dayton. Now, the good thing is, your roads, you didn't have a lot of traffic, so that's the good news. Everything else was bad, right? It was — everything else was bad. Thirty thousand Dayton families saw their jobs disappear overnight. By 2016, the per capita income in Dayton had fallen 12 percent below the national average of $50,000. Remember this. This all happened — wait — I mean, these numbers are incredible, what's happened in three years. Ohio lost one in three manufacturing jobs, two out of three iron and steel mill jobs, and half of its auto jobs, courtesy of Joe Biden and that crew, that group, that whole ideology. And now, of course, his ideology has changed. He's so far left. Now, he has — just so you understand, he has no choice. It's not him. He's being pulled left. You see where Kamala — Kamala, she's another great one, that one. <laughs> you see her poll numbers? Her poll numbers were going down, and I can't — nobody treated him worse than to Kamala, right? And she said the Harris administration and working with Joe Biden — did you see that? But he said worse. He said the Harris — right? He said the Harris-Biden administration. And I heard that. I actually heard that live, although it's not real live, I'll tell you. It's sort of half — half gone. It's shot. It's shot. But he said the Harris-Biden administration will — and that's where it is. Look, this guy is shot. I mean, if he makes it, it's — it's going to be — I'm going to come back to Dayton. I'm going to say, what the hell happened? I will have lost to the worst presidential candidate in the history of politics. I really believe that. The guy can't speak without the teleprompter. Although, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I think <laughs> — she says this time. I hope you're right. I hope you're — thank you. I hope you're right. I tell you, the country can't afford it. One thing I've learned is that President Xi of China, President Putin of Russia, Kim Jong-un, North Korea, every one of these leaders, they're not shot. And we can't have somebody that's sleepy. We can't have a sleepy guy negotiating for us. Oh, would they like to see him, though? Did you see? Would they like to see Joe? It's their dream to see Joe. How about Iran? You think Iran might like to see Joe Biden? 
They'd go back, they'd say, give me another $150 billion, you know? We gave them $150 billion. We gave them $1.8 billion in cash. You know what that looks like? $1.8 billion in cash. And I'll tell you what, if and when we win, we will get a call with about nine seconds after the victory, and it'll be Iran's going to want to make a deal. We want them to make a deal. We want them to be good. We want them to be strong. They just can't have a nuclear weapon. That's all. It's very simple. Can't have a nuclear weapon. But I told people, I said, don't talk to them now. Look, they want to wait. This is like, this is the gift. If they could do that, if China could do it, I mean, think of it. If Russia could do it. By the way, nobody's been tougher on Russia than me. With the sanctions, with the, uh, I exposed, right, Nord Stream 2, that's the pipeline. No, you never heard of Nord Stream until I came along. I said to Germany, let me get this straight. We defend Germany, right? We defend Germany. And that's it. They don't pay what they're supposed to pay. They're delinquent, you know, they're delinquent. So I said to Angela, and I like Angela, but I said, but she's smart. You know, why should she pay if she doesn't have to? So I said, Angela, so we defend you against Russia, and you pay billions of dollars to Russia. How does that work? Explain to me what's that all about. But you never heard about that stuff. We give tank busters to Ukraine. We sell them in theory. I don't know if we'll ever get the money, you know. We, uh, we sell them. But, you know, he gave pillows. Maybe he got them from Mike Lindell, the pillow man. Do you think when, when Obama, when Obama sent pillows over to Ukraine, I send tank busters, they send pillows. Then the, the fake news goes, oh, well, let me tell you, we have been very rough. But at the same time, we get along. I like Putin, he likes me. You know, we get along. It's bad. Isn't it, wouldn't you say it's smart to get along? Okay, smart. I get along, or I got along with President Xi, but I, I don't know, after what happened here, I'm having a hard time with China. I really am. You know, they're buying a lot. The trade deal has been incredible. Uh, they have been living up to it, in all fairness. The largest order of corn in the history of our country, largest order of soybeans, largest cattle order. But it means less now, you understand, right? If we wouldn't have been hit with this pandemic, which they could have stopped, uh, it would have meant a lot, but it just means a lot less to me right now. So now, after selling you out and bleeding you dry, Biden is back asking for your vote. The guy, when he was in prime time, which for him was about half time, <laughs> a long time ago, I had a friend, a senator, a Democrat, believe it or not. I, got, I used to get along with Democrats very well. Actually, better than the Republicans, but I won't say that. But I asked him, who's your smartest senator? And he gave me a name. This is 25 years ago. I said, who's your dumbest senator? Joe. Who's Joe? Joe Biden. Oh. I see. He's, he is, really. Yeah, he's the dumbest senator. Well, now he's a lot dumber than he used to be, I can tell you. It's true. It's true. It's true. And you can take the gloves off because, you know, they do all this disinformation. They make up phony stuff. Like the military with what he said. I think it's a disgrace. And he should apologize. A source said. I have 27 people that said, no way. It didn't happen. They said it, and they're, they're, the names are out there. So when they do that, you take the gloves off. That's all. Really dishonest people. Dishonest people. No, it's a disgrace. And nobody's done for the military what I've done. You know, we've totally rebuilt our military. We've made it stronger than ever. We have the greatest weapons in the world. We've gotten raises for our great warriors. Our vet has got, just got a 91 percent approval rate, the highest in the history of the VA, our vets. They gave it a 91, the VA gave it a 91 percent approval rate. So nobody's done more. Nobody. And we do. We have weapons, the likes of which nobody's ever seen before. Hope to God we don't have to use them. But nobody has them. Not China, not Russia. Nobody has the weaponry that we have. We have the greatest weapons in the world. And hope we don't have to use them. Just remember that we have the, uh, I call it the super-duper missiles, like at a level that nobody's ever seen before. You don't see them either. They go through here, they say, boy, what happened? What was that? It's gone. It's here. There it is. I hear a noise over there. Where is it? It's gone. It's over there. But it's uh, hydrosonic. I call it super duper, because super duper is easier for people to understand than hydrosonic. 
But, you know, we have the greatest uh, — we, you know, $2.5 trillion we spent. The greatest weapons in the world, the greatest weapons that this world has ever seen, without a question. I don't have to say what they are. In fact, the fake news said, he just gave away classified information. I said, no. I just said we have the greatest weapons. I didn't tell you what they are. I could, because as president, I'm allowed to do it. I mean, you know, Hillary Clinton's the one that gives away classified information. <laughs> And how about the idiot John Bolton? I mean, he comes in, all he wants to do is go to war with everybody. If, if I listened to that idiot, we'd be right now in World War V. <laughs> Sir, we saw some movement in China. I think we should go to war with them. And I think uh, Russia, let's do them both at the same time. Let's also go in right now to North Korea. Hey, do you remember North Korea? We were supposed to be in war with North Korea. What happened? What happened? You know what the press said? They said, it's amazing. First, they said it was amazing, and those people lost their job, probably. You know, it's amazing what I've done, they said. And, uh, and <laughs> no, we were supposed to be at war. And they have a lot of nuclear stuff, you know. It wouldn't be easy. We'd win. We're going to win. Although, I tell you, when I took over, our military was totally depleted. We had a depleted mil. We had old planes. We had old everything. It was a depleted military. And now it's a beautiful, brand new. We have F-35s that you can't see. Stealth. They're stealth. We have all new rockets, all new missiles, brand new planes, the bombers, the, the tankers, the jet fighters. What we've done is incredible. And we had to do it. Somebody had to do it. You know, it's, somebody said, well, we're sort of doing some damage to our budget. I said, look, I want to have a strong military. If I see some people, some soldiers from foreign lands, right, walking up or running up the White House lawn, the beautiful South Lawn of the White House, I'm not going to be saying, you know, we didn't do too well with the military, but we kept it under control in the budget, right? <laughs> now, now, the military supersedes everything. I don't know. To me, I've always heard the Supreme Court, but to me, the most important thing has always been the military, our defense, and our offensive needed. You know, it's always been the most. Joe Biden should not be asking for your support. He should be begging for your forgiveness, and he should be. Biden supported the disastrous Trans-Pacific Partnership. This building wouldn't be here if you ever did that one, which would have been a death sentence for the U.S. auto industry and other industries. He supported the horrendous Korea deal. Okay, how about the South Korea deal? It's a uh, disaster. So that was a Hillary Clinton deal, I must say. Not him, although I guess he had it. You know, his vice. Hey, you know what's interesting with Biden? So he always says, why didn't the president do this? And why didn't the president do that? And why didn't do this and that and this and that? The guy's been there for 47 years, but he just left like three and a half years ago. You know, I mean, he was there. And I keep saying, uh, why didn't you do it? Why didn't you do it? You know, could have done it. It's not like he was 25 years ago. He's, they were there three and a half years ago. Why didn't you do it, Sleepy Joe? But the Korea deal, and I say it all the time, she said, this will create 250,000 jobs. And everybody got all excited, all oh, those jobs. The problem was the jobs were all produced in South Korea, so that didn't work out too well. 250,000 jobs for South Korea. Anyway, I renegotiated the deal in its entirety. Now it's a good deal. That was a rip, I'll tell you. And the pro-China Paris Climate Accord, it's pro-everything, it's pro-everybody but us, that would have cost us trillions of dollars, and we would have had the privilege of closing down Dayton's uh, probably 25 percent of your companies. You couldn't have never — you could have never done it. It's an anti-America deal. And you know, when I did it, I thought I'd be scorned. People understood that it was a total ripoff. They understood it. With every decision, Joe Biden twisted a knife into the hands and heart of the American worker. But these brutal betrayals ended the day I took the oath of office. That's true. I mean, I, I saw so much stupidity, the endless wars. And we're almost out of Afghanistan, as you know. 
not easy to get out because we have people in this country, the military industrial complex, Eisenhower called it the military industrial complex, and it does exist. It's not easy to get out, but we're very close to getting out and getting out of the Middle East. We're down to very little in Iraq. We're down to almost nothing in Syria. But, you know, I will be honest with you, we are keeping — we kept the oil. Somebody said, you still have some soldiers in Syria? I said, that's right, I kept the oil. We kept the oil. We should have done that in Iraq. Remember, I used to say a long time ago, before I was — don't go into the Middle East, but if you're going to go in, keep the oil. Well, we went in and we didn't keep anything. And all the death, the blood in the sand — I call it the blood in the sand, that worthless sand, all of that death that's been caused for no reason. It's the worst decision in the history of our country going into the Middle East. We're in there now. Eight trillion dollars. We're almost out. Eight trillion dollars and nothing but death. And millions of lives, if you look at both sides. I'll look at both sides. Somebody would say, oh, he shouldn't be looking at the other side. I'll look at both sides. A lot of innocent people were killed. We lost incredible soldiers. I see the, the coffins, the caskets come in in Dover, and I see it, and I said, oh, boy, why, why, why? Why, why did they do this? My first week, I withdrew from the Trans-Pacific Partnership and saved that whole business of, of so much. I extended the — and what I had to do is I extended for a short time and then totally ended NAFTA. Do you know NAFTA is the worst trade deal ever made? Ever made. And we did the USMCA, Mexico, Canada. We have a great deal. And the reason I know it's a great deal, because the other sides are unhappy. You always like to have an unhappy person at the other side. No, they're okay. But they had a free rip at us for years and years and years. NAFTA, how many, how many buildings, how many factories did you lose right here? Where they moved over to Mexico, moved up to Canada, moved all over the place. But that's not going to happen anymore. The New Deal makes it very prohibitive to do that. In 2017, I signed a historic executive order making it really something. You've got to do a little — a couple of little expressions. It's called Buy American and Hire American. You know, life is crazy in politics. Biden runs for president like two or three times, right? And I used to call him 1 percent Joe. And that was prime time for him, right? Now that prime time is long over, he ends up winning the nomination, explain it. But had Elizabeth Warren left and been loyal to her communist ideology — they would say socialist, but it's communist. It's pretty close. It's maybe somewhere in between, heading toward the sea word. But had she left before Super Tuesday, Biden would have lost every state. But she took the votes away from Bernie. And Bernie's a nice guy. You know, crazy Bernie. He — he — is the nicest loser I've ever seen. You know, when they talk about sportsmanship, he got screwed by Hillary Clinton badly, but not as badly as this time. This was worse, because all Pocahontas had to do is leave a day early. She didn't even have to endorse him. And the votes that she got, which weren't many, but far more than he needed, because he lost a couple of states by literally a small amount of votes. He would have gotten most of those votes. He would have won. He would have been the one we we fought. I don't know. Who would have been better? Who would have been easier? Sleepy Joe Biden or Crazy Bernie? Tell me. Sleepy Joe. Who says Sleepy Joe? Who says Bernie? I don't know. It's hard. Bernie had more spirit. You know, Joe's got no spirit. It's dead as a rock. The only spirit he's got is spirit to beat me. And that's called a negative spirit. And historically, that doesn't do that well. If you look at old races, when somebody's getting votes because they don't like somebody, you know, there's an ideology that, let's face it, doesn't like me too much. Somebody said, we don't like his personality. I said, I always thought I had a good personality. They don't like my personality. Who the hell cares about my personality? Right? Right? Got to get the job done. See those rough guys over there? I don't like their personality either, but they get the job done, right? Who the hell cares? Who cares about their personality? But when Sleepy Joe was vice president, and other countries flooded our market. Thank you very much. That's, who is that? Wow. Good voice. Have you ever tried opera? <laughs> Good voice. Thank you, Donald. 
But other countries flooded our market with subsidized washing machines. Remember that disaster? Does anybody know about the Whirlpool plant in Clyde, Ohio, right? And the head of Whirlpool came to see me. I was president-elect. And he called, and I don't know, for some reason, I've heard of Whirlpool. Or I've heard of it all my life, I guess. I didn't know much about it. They made washing machines, and I never knew. I knew they were dumping steel on us and dumping certain things, but I didn't know they were dumping washing machines. And he was a good guy. came up to my office, and he said, he's, uh, they're putting us out of business. In South Korea, China, they're dumping washing machines. They make washing machines. They dump them into our market. They put everybody out of business. Then they charge you a lot of money when everyone's gone, just like Rockefeller used to do, right? Just like other people do right now, unfortunately, but we're trying to track them down. And I said, that's really terrible. I don't know. Somehow it hit me. So we put a 50 percent tariff on all washing machines coming into our country. And I visited — I visited with Jim Jordan. Do you know Jim Jordan? One of the best wow. — You know, he's a great wrestler. He was a great — one of the best. He was a great, great wrestler. Really uh, a phenomenal wrestler, a real champion, NCAA champion and all, Jim. And that's the way he is. He's a tough guy. No games, right? No games. And he works with our guys here, you, your guys. And uh, he was great. But it's Jim's uh, area. And we went up and saw the plant. And they're making thousands a day. I mean, they gave me a number. It can't be — I think they said, like, 20,000 a day. I said, how the hell can you make that many washing machines? But you know what I'm talking about, Congressman, right? They're making thousands of washing machines a day, and it's a vibrant company again. It was dead. It was going to close. But I evened up the score. I put the tariffs. And now what they're doing is uh, LG and Samsung and these companies that made the washing machine, they're now coming into the United States. And in order to avoid the tariff, they're building plants in the United States. And that's okay. And that's what we should be doing. We did it a lot. We're, we're going to be doing it a lot more, too. We're going to be doing it a lot more. Biden allowed other countries to target our steel industries, and it was like a disaster for our steel industry. But we took historic action to end these practices and place strong tariffs on foreign aluminum and steel, and it brought back our steel. Now, steel plants are opening or being upgraded in Toledo, Marion, Cuyahoga Heights, Mingo Junction. And all across the Midwest, they were gonzo. And, you know, certain industries you need. You know, some industries you don't, but certain — steel you need. Steel you need. For defense, you need it. You, know, you don't want to talk war. You don't want to talk about that. But if we had a problem, what are you going to do? Well, we don't have any steel mills. Let's see if we can get some steel from China. But, sir, you're fighting them. Well, that's not working out too well. Now, we had to save our steel. We had to save our aluminum industry, and we've done it. We've done a great job, but you have a lot of steel mills going up right here in Ohio. And a lot of them being expanded, and they're really state-of-the-art. As Vice President Biden did nothing, as China stole our intellectual property, flooded our markets with dumped goods, unfairly subsidized its industries, manipulated its currency. They're the greatest in the world at that. I go to my guys, they say, what about doing a little movement on the dollar? Sir, we can't do that. It has to float naturally. Well, China does it. China, you talk about a manipulation. Man, it's like a yo-yo. Let's see. Let's raise it. Let's lower it. Let's do this and that. But we actually called them on it, didn't we, Congressman? Turner, by the way, you did such a good job. He was you, — you are a hell of a lawyer. You could represent me any day. Actually, he did. He actually did represent me. Right? Davidson, Turner, what a group. They're tough. And then you add Jordan into it. They like him, though, don't they? Huh? They like Jim. And they poisoned our communities with fentanyl. You know that? Instead, Biden allowed China to ravage our towns, raid our factories, and rip apart our communities. That's what they did. And then he goes in and he brings his son. Hey, see if you can give him some money. Give him a billion and a half dollars. I went to Steve Schwarzman. Steve Schwarzman is, like, one of the biggest guys on Wall Street Blackstone. I said, Steve, what are the chances? He does a lot of business with China. 
said, see, what are the chances of somebody walking into an office in China and in 10 minutes walking out with 1.5 billion to manage? He said, zero. He said, I couldn't do it, and I have this great company. It's a, it's a disgrace. How about where he points and he says, you're not getting your billion dollars unless you get rid of that damn prosecutor. And then they says, they got rid of the prosecutor. Here's your billion dollars. Does anything happen? Nothing happens. Uh, Republicans just have to get so much. I'm so, I'm so angry at Republicans. I, I am. I'm so angry. I am so angry, but a lot of things are happening. You're seeing, you're reading the papers also. A lot of things are happening. You know, they spied on my campaign. We caught them. And by the way, that's Biden. That's Obama. They spied on my campaign. It's never happened before. It's treason. Comey and all the sleazebags, they spied on my campaign. And we caught them. Let's now see what happened. I stay out of it. I just stay. I'm trying like hell to stay out of it. You know, I'm, I don't have to, actually, but I'm, it's better if I do, I think. Barely he's shaking his head, sort of like, that's the weakest yes, but it's true, right? But it's true. I'm trying to stay out of it. But it's a disgrace that it's taken this long. I tell you what, these people are bad people. They've done things. What they've done to General Flynn and to other people is a disgrace. It's a disgrace. And many others. But Joe Biden's agenda is made in China. My agenda is made in the USA. It's very simple. And I took the toughest ever action to stand up to China and their decades of pillaging, plundering, looting, including these massive tariffs. You know, don't forget, I charged tariffs, took in tens of billions of dollars. They targeted our great farmers. Do we have any farmers here? Any farmers? Well, am I correct? We gave the farmers $28 billion. Thank you very much, China, right? Because they were targeted for 28 over a two-year period, 12 and 16, right? Did you get your check? And you might not be in business if I didn't do that. Yeah. Good? Good. Thank you, darling. She gave you the right answer. It's always dangerous to do that. No, I never got the money, no. She got the money, yep. But once again, Joe Biden is sided with China over America. Look, do you think this guy's going to be tough in China? His son? No, no, think of it. And then he takes ads. He's going to be tough on China. This guy, they looted him and Obama. And in all fairness, not just the eight years. This has gone on for 25, 30 years. Probably the biggest reason I decided to run and give up one of the greatest lives anyone's ever had for this. For this. But you know why I like it? Because we have done more in the first three and a half years than any administration in the history of the country. And I say that, and these fake news people don't even question it. There's nobody done what we've done between our military, between our trade, between our energy independence, between all of the things we could go on forever. But Biden vowed to remove those tariffs. He wants to remove the tariffs. You know, when I made the deal with China, I said, I have to leave the tariffs on. They said, you got to be kidding. They wanted one thing, the removal of the tariffs, and I wouldn't do it. We wouldn't do it. I said, no. But Biden said the other day he wants to take the — he doesn't know what a tariff is, first of all. <laughs> Sleepy Joe would like to uh, remove the tariffs off China. They're paying billions of dollars a year. Could we take them off? Absolutely. What are they exactly? But it wouldn't even happen that way. The radical left, which likes China, the radical left would walk into his office, and here's your bill, right? This is supposed to be a speech. I haven't exactly used it too much today. And it's a, here, President, sign this. Oh, okay. Do you have a pen? Okay. What was that? That's a deal with China. Don't worry about it. That's what would happen. But he gave China free reign to continue ransacking the American heartland. And you know, look, they were targeting you. The reason nobody took on China was China said, we're going to go after your heartland. And they said that to the, to the presidents. And I said, go ahead, do it. And the farmers were the most loyal. The, they all said, we've got to do it sometime. They told me that. I mean, they told me that loud and clear. We didn't lose anything with the farmers. They said, somebody's got to do it. And I said, here's what we're going to do. We're going to let them target you. 
They're going to stop buying. We're going to charge them tariffs. And I'm going to give you back the money that you lost, that you were targeted for. And we're going to have tens of billions left over for the Treasury. That's exactly what happened. Nobody else ever thought of it. Joe Biden is weak. He's too scared to stand up to the radical left in his own party. And he's terrified of standing up to China. But I believe he's much more scared of the radical left than he is of China. That's why China is desperate. You see the reports, the news reports. They want Biden to win. They want Biden to win. They want him to win at any cost. If Biden is elected, China will own America. And if Biden is elected, you will have a depression the likes of which this country has never seen before. It's very simple. It's very simple. Largest tax increase ever proposed. That's what you're going to have. Does anybody mind paying more tax? You know, they, I, I, you know, all my life I've studied, I like politics. I just always liked it. It's lucky I liked it because, you know, never did it before. They said, you can't run. He's got no experience. And now I look around yesterday. I was in the Oval Office. I said, oh, excuse me, is this the Oval Office? You know? <laughs> no, but, but it's, a lot of it's common sense. It's all common sense. That's why we call it protest. We're studying some of the things. I'll tell you one quick story. So we're building an aircraft carrier long before my term, the Gerald Ford. And they decide on the catapults. You know what a catapult? That throws the plane into the air. For years, it's been 50 years, whatever, longer. It's been steam. Simple, beautiful steam. Wah! Throws it off. Wah! You ever see those airplanes? They go off. The catapults. So I noticed that this ship is never getting done. I came in, and they said, oh, it's got tremendous cost overruns. I said, what's the problem? Well, the catapult system doesn't work. That's strange, because they've been building them for years. I wonder why you know about this. And so I said, I, I, you know, strange. Let me check. So anyway, I'm supposed to go over and take a tour. I want to take a tour of the ship, find out why it's so late, why it's so — I won't tell you how many billions of dollars it's over budget. Billions and billions of dollars. And, but I heard the catapult system and the elevators are no good. Other than that, it's wonderful, right? The elevators that bring the planes up, they don't work. So if you have a problem, you can't get your planes up. They're down, stuck in a garage down at the bottom. Not too good. So I go over, and they want me to meet the admiral. I said, no, 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 I don't want to meet the admiral yet. I'll meet the admiral. I can meet with the admirals a lot. I got a lot of admirals. I like the admirals. I want to meet with the catapulters. Sir, what would you want to meet with the catapulters for? I want to find out why the hell the catapulters don't work. So I went there, and you know, they did a new system. It's electric. It's all electric. So instead of steam, which is simple and great and powerful and good, and they know how it works for years and years, they decide to go all electric. Now, if you take a little glass of water, take this glass of water, you throw it on, and that's the end of that. You bring somebody in from MIT. How the hell do you fix it? It's all, and we're dealing with the ocean and rockets being shot at the ship and rough stuff, right? But it wasn't working. So I said, no, I want to meet with the catapulters. So there were five people. They came in. One's been doing it for over 20 years, I think he said. I said, who's the boss? I am, sir. I said, what do you think of our new uh, system of electric catapults? Sir, it's no good, sir. I said, that's not good. That's not what I — actually, it is what I expected here, to be honest. I said, so it's no good, right? The system is no good. No, sir. I said, what do you think of steam? Sir, it's the greatest. And if it breaks down, I can fix it with a blowtorch or this hammer. I can fix it. And if the waves hit it, sir, all it does is cool it down a little bit, sir. It's actually good for it, good for the surrounding steel. I said, so you think it's better? I said, why did they do the uh, electric? Because they're totally inexperienced. Then I wanted to see the architect, and I saw a representative, the architect of the ship. Now, this is a ship that costs $15 billion. And I looked at the architect. I said, have you designed a ship before? And he said, yeah, I have. I said, you know, they have a $900 million cost overrun for electric catapults. And they're no good, even if they were. I said to the guy, why, why is it that they did like, sir, we could do it much faster. The thing goes back and forth. I said, all right, well, that makes sense. But the catapulter said, but sir, it doesn't matter because it takes one minute 
and 52 seconds if you're Mario Andretti's team to get a plane hooked in. So the steam generates during that minute and a half, and it's all set to go. It doesn't help that it keeps going back and forth. I said, that makes sense. That makes sense. So it's $900 million in cost of runs. And here's the story. They spent much more money, and it's no good. Then they have the elevators. Now, tractors use hydraulic, right? You know, they can do anything. Lift up, they go. It can rain. It can snow. Lightning hits the damn thing, and nothing happens. The lightning gets hurt. Nothing happens. So they have these big elevators that lift the planes up. You know, the sirens go off. Everything's beautiful. The problem is the elevators don't work. So they're magnetized. They li they're lifted by magnets. I said, who the hell ever heard? Of I know about that. You know, it's a new technology that's about 200 years off. So instead of using powerful hydraulic that never breaks, they have magnetized elevators. So stupid. I mean, honestly, so stupid. I tell you this because you're workers, and you guys understand it's, it's what we do is so stupid. So they have hundreds of millions of dollars in cost overrun for stuff that's no good. And two years ago, I told them, it's no good. You might as well rip it out because it's never going to work. You put hydraulic in the elevators, and you go back to steam. And it's such a shame to see the kind of money that was squandered by people that have no idea what the hell they're doing. It's a shame, yeah? It's a shame. And you would understand that. I'd only tell that story to really sort of a group like this, because you guys understand it. It's uh, mechanical engineering at a very easy level. It's easy to understand. Hundreds of millions of dollars wasted for something not as good. For decades, our politicians spent trillions and trillions of dollars rebuilding foreign nations, fighting foreign wars, and defending foreign borders. But now, we are finally protecting our nation, rebuilding our cities. We are bringing our jobs, our factories, and our troops back home to the USA, where they belong. When the terrible plague arrived from China, we mobilized American industry like never before. We rapidly developed life-saving therapies, reducing the fatality rate by 85 percent. We've done such a good job, except in terms of public relations, because the press just will not accept it. They just want us to think of what we've done with the ventilators. Soon, soon the vaccines and the therapeutics. We've already remdesivir and other things. Europe is almost 30 percent greater excess mortality than the United States. I don't want to say it. And now, as you know, you heard today, Europe had a tremendous outbreak, okay? You know, they say, well, Europe, Europe, Europe. No, we're doing great. We're doing great. Sadly, very sadly, I hate it. But they had a big outbreak that caused a, a stir in the market today. We launched the most ambitious vaccine program ever created, and we will deliver a vaccine before the end of the year, but it could be a lot sooner than that, a lot sooner. You know, it's interesting, the Democrats, they're all saying, we want a vaccine, we want it. That's when they thought we couldn't get it, right? Because if they, if we relied on them, this vaccine would have taken two or three years more because of the FDA. And I've mobilized the FDA, and it's incredible, but it would have taken two or three years more. So when they heard that we were getting the vaccine, they started knocking it. Think of it. So they, like, they put politics over life and death. I mean, it's incredible. By the way, we're rounding the corner in any event, but we're going to have a vaccine very soon. It's a great vaccine. Great, great vaccine. It's looking really good. Really good. And it's going to be a lot sooner than anyone thought. And it's pretty sad when the Democrats try and make that into a political issue because they're unhappy. It's coming too soon. They didn't think that would happen. We will end this pandemic, and the next year will be one of the greatest years in the history of our country. That's what's happening. The third quarter will end just before November 3rd. You will see numbers, the likes of which no country has ever seen. That's how well we're doing. You'll see. I mean, it's before, so they're not good. I guess you're going to have to remember that. And if they're good, I hope you're going to remember it, too, but they're going to be great. Somebody predicted 25 percent, and then somebody said 35 percent GDP increase. Nobody's ever heard of a number like that, but that's the kind of thing we're doing. Under my leadership, we built the strongest economy in the history of the world, and now we are doing it again. 
right? They know. In the past four months, we've added a record-smashing 10.6 million jobs, never been close to that. Four months, 10.6 million jobs. Manufacturing production is up 61 percent. Auto production has surged 500 percent. And retail sales have soared 112 percent. But if sleepy Joe Biden wins, the economy will collapse. It's going to collapse. It's going to — even psychologically, it'll collapse. And, you know, as good as the stock market's doing, it's a headwind knowing you have an election. Things happen in elections, some bad things, some stupid things. But that's a headwind. We'd be doing even better if this election were over. If we win and when we win the election, you're going to see things roar, because that's what people want. That's what the market wants. And that's what the workers want. Biden keeps talking about a nationwide shutdown. There's no shutdown. My plan is to crush the virus. Biden plan. And Biden's really plan is to — and it's not — it's not that he wants to crush America, but he will, just out of gross incompetence. Biden will surrender to the virus, just like he surrendered to China, and just like he surrendered to the radical left, including his own running mate who's running the show. And she's nothing special. She is nothing between her and Elizabeth Warren. The, what a couple of great ones they are. What a couple of — what some people. Although, I tell you something, Elizabeth Warren did do a great number on Bloomberg, didn't she? I tell you. One question, and that was the end of him. How are you enjoying politics, Mike? That didn't work out too well. $1.8 billion wiped out in one question. That was the most expensive question in history. To protect our workers during the pandemic, I suspended the entry of new foreign workers who threaten American jobs. I know you don't mind. You don't mind that, do you? As the economy reopens, I want to ensure American workers that we're putting America first and our jobs are put first, our country is put first, our manufacturing is put first. Everything is now put first for the USA. And by the way, we're up to — we're up to mile 330 on the wall. 330. We're setting records on not allowing all of these — I mean, some really bad — when you look at the traffickers, they traffic in women and drugs and other things, but they traffic in women. The drug dealers all — we're setting records now on the wall because we have 330 miles. We're doing — we're averaging 10 miles a week. And we'll be finished with the wall very soon. And it's had a huge impact. So one of the most radical things that will happen — and there's no way he can get away with this, because he was banning fracking for a year. He's running, running. He's banning fracking. I said, he's gone. He's gone. And then all of a sudden, now all of a sudden, he said, well, I didn't really say that. He did. Remember, it's always the first thing they say with a politician. It's the first thing. He wants to ban fracking and outlaw Ohio energy production. And you're a big energy producer, whether you know it or not. So he's going to ban fracking. There's no question about it. And even if he didn't want to, the whole radical left, their plan is to ban fracking. They want to ban fracking. They don't want any fossil fuels. Just a few days ago, Biden reiterated his plan to require net zero carbon emissions. Now, you do that. I think it's wonderful. Close up about 70 percent of your plants. This requirement would end all investment in fracking, and it would be — it would just shut down everything. Our country — look at the — you see the rolling blackouts they have in California? I don't think we want too many of them in Ohio, do we? Would anybody like a few rolling blackouts? Like, we'd like to watch President Trump tonight. I'm sorry, darling, but we have no energy. We have no energy. We're going to get it from the wind. The wind is blowing. The wind. The wind has got a wonderful, wonderful energy. The wind, when it's blowing, it's just fine for about 20 percent of the time. By ending fracking, Biden would destroy 700,000 to a million Ohio jobs, and your energy prices would go through the roof. 
When Biden was vice president, they deliberately killed 40 percent of all coal mining jobs, and the rest were coming fast. I saved it. I put our miners back to work. Clean coal. I call it clean coal. Could do a lot with coal today. And while I'm president, America will remain the number one producer of oil and natural gas anywhere in the world, and Ohio workers will continue leading the way. And that's what we're doing. And just in concluding, over the next four years, we will build America into the manufacturing superpower of the world, and we will end our reliance on China and all other faraway lands that nobody in this beautiful facility, whatever the hell you make here, I don't know, but it looks good to me. But nobody ever heard of it. You have lands that we go to that nobody ever even heard of. Where are you sending this money? We're sending it to such and such a country. I never heard of it. We'll make our medical supplies right here in the United States. We'll cut your taxes and taxes for middle class families at a level never seen before. You know, we gave you the biggest tax cut in the history of our country. We gave you the biggest regulation cut in the history of our country. And we're going to give you additional regulation cuts. That's one of the reasons you had the jobs. You know, in many ways, the regulation cutting was perhaps as important or more important. You see the tax cutting easier, but the regulation cutting was every bit as important. And we're going to expand opportunity zones to ensure that no community is left behind. And they've been a tremendous success, especially for the African-American, Hispanic community. We're, uh, we're doing incredibly. Tim Scott, great senator from South Carolina. We worked hard on it. App Opportunity Zones, it's a big success. We'll enforce immigration rules that defend American families, raise American wages, and always put the interests of American workers first. We will enact fair trade deals that ensure more products are proudly stamped with that beautiful phrase, made in the USA, right? And we will always live by the timeless words of our national motto, in God we trust. And they took the word God out of the Pledge of Allegiance. You saw that. I was listening to this Pledge of Allegiance, and I said, that's strange. They must have made a mistake. It must have been a typo. Something happened. But then it happened twice. And then it was getting ready. It happened a third time. And somebody heard that the public was enraged, including me, by the way. And by the way, we want the NFL to stand and put their hand on their heart. Got to do it. Right? I thought, we, I thought we taught them that lesson about two years ago. They tried, the commissioner tried it again. It's not working too well. Not working. The ratings are not good. People are angry about it. People love our country. You love our country. You love our flag. You love our anthem. This November, if you want jobs, if you want opportunity, if you want safety, and if you want a president who defends the dreams of workers in Dayton and Akron and all across Ohio and America, then you need to get out and vote for Trump. Mike Pence. How good is Mike Pence? Trump Pence. And I love Mike, but it's not Pence Trump, okay? You understand? It's not Pence. Mike will be the first one to say, you know, when he said that the other day, he said the Harris-Biden administration. I said, that's strange. And Mike called me up. He said, you never have to do that. I said, don't worry, Mike, I won't, I promise. <laughs> Mike Pence has done a great job. I'll tell you, he's a great guy. Together, we will make America safer. We will make America stronger and prouder and greater than ever before. We're going to make it greater than ever before. And again, this really was, this was not a rally. This was a, a, a group of people, workers. And this is what it was told to me as. And uh, we had a lot of fun, and we have a lot of fun, but it's very serious business. November 3rd, and before, depending on whether or not you have those fake ballots or whatever, be careful with that. 
I mean, that thing is going to be one of the great catastrophes. What a mess. And they want it to be a mess. They know it's no good. I think it's 11 different races. It's been — they can't even — when they have small races, they can't count. People steal the ballots. People don't get the ballots. They don't send them to a Republican area or maybe a Democrat area, whatever. It's still wrong, but it happens to be Republican, unfortunately. But they don't send them out. Then they harvest them, which they're not allowed to do. They have in Nevada, the governor said, he signed an order that they don't have to sign. We need no — no signature verification. Oh, that's great, because they couldn't get people to sign. So they said, we'll just send them in. Don't worry about it. This is a real affront to our democracy. This is a horrible thing that's going on. And the Democrats know it. And, that you know, they, they say, well, he's not for our great heritage. He is fighting our vote. No, I'm not fighting our vote. You have ballots that you go out and you can get. You can request, as you know. You can request them, and that's fine. But if you're not requesting them, when you get millions of ballots — 80 million, they say, all over the United States — where the hell are they going? Who's sending them? Who's getting them? Who's sending them back? What's happening with the transportation? Who's guarding the lockboxes? They know it's a fraud waiting to happen. But, you know, we're not talking about 1 percent, which is no good, because you could lose or win an election by 1 percent. We're talking about 20 percent, 30 percent, in one case, over 40 percent. This is a disgrace that they're allowed to get away with. It. And what they want to do is they want to have a mess at the end of the evening on November 3rd and then fight it out in the courts. And the Democrats should be ashamed of themselves, because they know what they're causing. We love Ohio. We love Dayton. God bless you. God bless Ohio. And God bless America. Thank you.